Hey guys, wanted to bring you another video of a football life of Lyle Azedo. Uh, and w wanted to um, give you a little insight or what as much as I know before watching this video. So what I knew about him was that he was one of the first ones that used steroids and admitted. So that's what I knew of him mostly. Um, because he was before I really got into football and the people, I mean, the people that I work with here um, and other contractors and stuff like that, same thing. Um, pretty much we, e either you have to be um, older than 35 or so to probably remember watching him or uh, knowing him. Um, I mean, I knew more of his teammates because Howie Long and Marcus Allen, those guys were around longer than him. Um, and he was already older at the tail end of his career by the time I was into football and, and watching my first football games and stuff like that. But, uh, I mean, so so this is what I was able to pick up from the, uh, the documentary. Um, so, like I said, he was one of the first ones that admitted that he used steroids. Um, died in 1992. He uh, described his childhood very lousy since he was, um, well, I guess the one incident was that he broke his dad's jaw and and was arrested for that. So that could scar a childhood, um, especially he didn't know how to be loved by his dad. And so, it, and he was doing that to try to protect his mom and sister, in that sense, because he, uh, his dad was very abusive, and so he just called it as a lousy childhood and didn't feel love from his dad and was trying to get his approval and get that love and that he was always looking for and happiness. So, um, another thing that was interesting was that he was saying that. A lot of people used steroids before 1987, the NFL testing. So he's almost like, I guess you could say, the Jose Canseco in my eye, saying that um, he was the guy that was one of the first one in his sport to say um, there was a problem and what uh, could happen as a cautionary tale of his life. And he admitted uh, what he did with his story using steroids and he admitted how it made him a lot better as a football player um, and he wished that he didn't have to do it and was able to make it on his own that way so in, C in Super Bowl 12 he actually played well but nobody knew it because how horrible the Denver Broncos played against the Dallas Cowboys he had t eight uh, the team had eight turnovers and so the ironic thing is, 30 years later, the Dallas Cowboys played the Buffalo Bills, and Buffalo Bills broke that record with nine turnovers. So I thought that was kind of interesting. It was the same team with the Dallas Cowboys. Um, so he did a lot of charitable work, and he would make a lot of time available for kids. So that's something that most people didn't know. Like, he, he did a lot of charitable work, and most people thought, oh, maybe... He's just doing that for publicity or um, just trying to give him a good image, good PR and stuff like that. But no, most of his teammates uh, said that he really enjoyed it and that was one of the few enjoyments and happiness he was able to get out of it. Um, he fought Muhammad Ali and they were able to look like you could tell it was a great story. They knew how to build up a story or um, promote the fight even though it was an expedition uh, fight so it w nobody was supposed to get hurt make each other look good it was almost like a wrestling event if you think of it that way um, and they were just throwing punches back and forth but no knockout was supposed to happen or anything like that but um, Lyle would try to said that he wanted to try to knock him out but then Muhammad Ali tried uh, showing up by like giving him some hard punches and you can actually see in the video it was kind of interesting um, but he ha actually had to mortgage his house to make this fight happen so 
nobody in their I would say right mind would actually take that risk to do a promotion like that unless um, one you're crazy or two you're a big risk taker or three you knew that you could make a lot of it or do uh, something but this was all going towards charity that's the other thing was interesting so he again he's re very charitable and, and that was a good example right there um, so one of the NFL rules they had to implement was because of Lyle because he loved to use his helmet against uh, as a weapon and uh, for fights and he one prime example was against Chris Ward of the New York Jets and you can actually see the video of him ripping the helmet off Chris Ward and tossing it towards him so um, yeah they had to implement that because back then they didn't even have that uh, rule until that incident happened he got Terry out when he won his first Super Bowl um, with the LA Raiders against the Redskins and he got very teary I took his best friend on the field and uh, w w was able to bring his best friend to like all the big career events for him so that that was very interesting he, his friend's not like someone famous or anything like you think most celebrities and most people would try to hang out with their own peers and stuff like that but he was still trying to be down to earth and still hung out with his original friends nobody famous or anything like that so he stayed very rooted and grounded in that sense which was very interesting um, he was married four times that's quite a bit I guess you would say because he was trying to find happiness but all his family said they would not blame his wife it was more of him because he was trying to find happiness in that sense um, he got into Hollywood after retirement but uh, was not still happy again couldn't find any happiness and fulfillment out of that. Next, um, he tried to come back to the NFL at the age of 41, and his comeback was short-lived because after one preseason, it was over. Al Davis said they're going to go with different direction with the younger guys, and at the age of 43, he was diagnosed with brain cancer, and so, or actually 42, and then that's when he actually came out with that Sports Illustrated that said I lied and came out with his whole story and wanted to be prime example of what could happen if you use steroids and so he died at the age of 43 and so it's a really great cautionary tale of what could happen and kind of, uh, one of his friends said he kind of sold his soul to the devil and the d devil came to uh, collect on that debt so I thought it was interesting overall documentary and a cautionary tale so I would recommend this for anybody that wants to learn from another prime example and this could be a CT um, I mean could be a brain damage type deal too with brain injuries that's going on with the concussions and everything so hopefully you like this video go ahead and share this everywhere go ahead and like share comment and subscribe thanks